Hey, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, today, Paul and I uh, discuss, well, of course, Thanksgiving and the uh, original Thanksgiving with the Pilgrims 400 years ago and drawing some parallels between infinite banking and Thanksgiving. And Paul even you know, de digs deep into his history major knowledge and, uh, and schools us on a few things. So um, what, what else are we going to talk about in, in here, Paul? Yeah, I think overall the theme today was just was was being thankful of course and and thinking about your legacy you know what, what would you like your legacy to be and how are you going to ensure that your legacy is one of abundance so we as always i i enjoyed this one uh hope you guys enjoy it too hey i'm dave and i'm paul and this is the wealth warehouse podcast All right, Paul. Well, man, we uh, we're in quite the cozy setting today. Uh, yeah, sitting out back with the fire raging behind us, and you know the autumn leaves. Uh, real Thanksgiving feel here. Yeah, it's nice. And I even wore. I was gonna wear my mossy oak obsession hunting hoodie. You know, because that's what I wear when I'm hunting turkeys. Yeah. But I decided to just kind of wear like a quarter zip with this orange e in this maroonish yeah. and then i kind of, we kind of match because this is kind of like a dark maroon or brown and you've got a nice nice shirt on as well well we had to since we're doing this live in person together oh in an outdoor <laughs> setting right. here that's pretty cool so anybody who's, who's only listening and not watching will have to jump on youtube to see what we're talking about yeah that's right but yeah you know i know the, the ladies go crazy over that mossy oak hoodie so I'm sure. But, yeah. And I had the hat with the American flag to match. Yeah. I'm sure it's got to be Tammy's favorite. Yeah. She loves so, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I hope everybody's taking some time off this week. I'm sure you are. Yeah. It's kind of. I got. Yeah. I mean. I've got my calendar blocked. Yeah. Me too. So I, in fact, I think I might have, you know, tomorrow, Tuesday before Thanksgiving that that holiday starts uh open for a couple meetings but yeah after that the rest of the week is blocked so time to hang out with family eat some good food watch some football all that good thanksgiving stuff so what are your plans we're driving to connecticut <clears throat> to uh spend thanksgiving uh, with tammy's tammy's mother's side of the family like all of her cousins still live up there and, are, and where she grew up and Danbury, Connecticut, in case anyone's wondering. So we're going to go up there and uh, spend three nights, I think. Um, and we're staying at a hotel because we have the dogs, but then we'll, we'll actually execute Thanksgiving at uh, at our cousin's house. Oh, cool. Yeah, nice, nice I think, people. <clears throat> yeah, I think we're going to, well, we're going to drive back to Kansas City because my brother and his family is going to fly into town and, you know, my sister and her family and my brother and my mom. So we'll have everybody there. Um, nice. But I, I think we're looking at, I don't know, my sister might be getting a, a uh, you know, turkey meal, Thanksgiving meal from the, the country club, just buying it. You know, and apparently they make pretty good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Which that's... We used to do that. <clears throat> yeah, there's When I was in high school. Yeah, yeah. My mom would, uh, we, the local restaurant in Wilmington, Massachusetts was Rocco's and they did a great Thanksgiving meal. We had... Because we had a Thanksgiving Day football game. Because I was a band geek, so I had to go, you know, play the play in the stands and play in the field, whatever. And <clears throat> there was no, you know, my mother was the band nurse, so there was just no time to prep. So it was gr we did that for you know probably six years in a row. It was great. It yeah. was barely good too. Yep. Uh, no prep. You know, a lot less cleanup. So I'm fine with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, in, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, let's talk about infinite banking and and thanksgiving so i think there's a lot of parallels here and i'm not sure that we we've done this before but there's a lot of parallels between um thanksgiving and infinite banking um one of those i'd say one of the first is you know really reaping the rewards of your labor so what was the, the first thanksgiving was you know as the story goes there was a group of pilgrims and then like 90 indians they all came together and feasted for a few days. They had this bountiful harvest, and they uh, they were just thankful for that. And and that's that was the beginning of it. I think in the 17th century, at some point, right? 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. They so didn't how complain does... about their microaggressions at the at the meal. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's probably no po- politic talk at the table. I mean, I don't well, even know. Could they even understand each other? Um, you know, I thought wasn't there. I could be getting my history uh, wrong. Wasn't wasn't there a, a, an Indian named Squanto or something, and he could speak yeah. English? Yeah, maybe. Right, so. that was the Pilgrims, was right? The, I don't know. I mean, Sacagawea was like uh, was uh, Lewis and Clark, right? Yeah, that's like yeah, yeah. That's that's way later in way, history, or way more recent in history, I guess. More recent, right? Yeah. Anyway, but, uh, yeah, we're not historians. Yeah, or Pocahontas, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's been a long time since, you know, fifth grade. So, um, Pretty sure Squanto is correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll go with that. So yeah. somebody somebody was able to interpret and communicate. Um, but, you know, pretty cool start to, of course, they didn't call it Thanksgiving then, but, you know, became a, an annual tradition. But really what it started with was, um, you know, harvesting. And you can't have a harvest unless you've planted seeds. So how does that relate to infinite banking to you, Paul? Yeah. <clears throat> well, our seeds are our premium dollars. Another way to look at it is just the money that we're saving, the money that we're capitalizing. And, you know, we often like to say that we're giving a life insurance company pennies and they're going to give us or give our legacy, you know, provide our legacy, our future death benefit will be paid out in dollars. Um, and it's kind of like we talk about with taxes, right? You Do you want to pay taxes on the seeds or the harvest? So it's right. the same thing, right? We're using post-tax dollars to pay premium. That do- Those dollars have already been taxed as far as income tax. And the death benefit that goes to our, you know, to our, uh, our trust or our beneficiary, whoever it is, whatever it is, uh, is going to be income tax free, you know, depending on you know, if you've got a lot of death benefits, some of that might be taxed, but there's ways to get around, you know, get yeah. around that. Anyway, so yeah, long story short, that is your, your seeds or your premium. I, I like that that you brought up the taxes and the, po- you know, the, the post-tax dollars going in. So it's kind of like a farmer. I was actually just watching a movie recently called The Free State of Jones, Matthew McConaughey, Civil War era movie. Yeah, how uh, was that? Um, it, I thought it was good. Um, yeah. But there was a, a part in there where he was talking about what a man puts into the ground, whatever grows from that, that's his. Because that was his labor. And that's his and, and nobody else's because, you know, the Confederate Army was, was, was taking their, their food to, to feed the troops. Um, yeah. That's the way life insurance is, if you think about it. You're putting seeds in the ground, you're paying premium dollars. But what comes out of that, that giant harvest... At the end of your life, when you graduate, that harvest that comes to your family is 100% theirs. There's no income tax on that harvest. Yes. So what a cool parallel. Yeah, and like each, you know, each year too, you get to enjoy, you know, if you think of, you know, a year's harvest um, kind of relates to like the cash value growth or the the equity of the policy right because you get to enjoy the harvest every single year and then of Mm -hmm. course you know this isn't a perfect analogy i suppose but it's you know over the long term maybe maybe you acquire more land and your harvest becomes larger and larger right you're able to plant more seeds as time goes on as well right so this this system of uh, your farming system expands just like your infinite banking system should expand. And, th- you know, those of you who have one policy, um, you know, if you've got the ability to open up another one, why haven't you yet? It doesn't make any doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the, the natural expansion of your system, just like a farmer may have started with one plot. Right. But why would you start? Why would you stop there? You have a, a much your family's growing every year. You know, especially back in those times, your your legacy, your lineage is going to be larger. So you want more plots of land, more places to plant seeds and, and more harvest to reap. So, yeah, I, I would agree. You know, this isn't one and done. Um, you know, I, the next point is is legacy. Like the, the pilgrims created this legacy that we're still carrying on today. Of, of giving thanks once a year, really thinking about what you're thankful for. 
Um, and, uh, you know, that's been going on for, you know, 400 years now, this legacy. Yeah. So they started something that's, that's perpetuated generation after generation after generation for 400 plus years. So I like to think about this, close your eyes, or if you're driving right now, don't close your eyes, but just imagine, envision you're at Thanksgiving dinner many years from now. So you've got kids and you've got grandkids and they're all meeting at your house because you're the, the patriarch or the matriarch and uh, you're hosting Thanksgiving dinner and you can look out at that table and, and know for certain that everyone, every person at that table is going to inherit a, a legacy of wealth that you started yourself. And if you train them correctly in, in matters of money, which money should be discussed at the dining table, I think, um, it's a perfect place to discuss it. If you train them well, that legacy will continue because they'll do the same things and just perpetuate that legacy, you know, indefinitely. Yeah. And if, you know, if somebody's not worthy of the inheritance, you have the complete control to cut them out or to maybe um, put in place a provision that limits their access to something, right? Either via spendthrift provision of a, of a trust or mm -hmm. um, even have the death benefits paid out, quite honestly. It doesn't have to always be a lump sum payout. So, no, I love that. And, and you know, it brings back fond memories. You know, we, we, would, we would often host Thanksgiving growing up and my, you know, my grandpa my Italian grandparents, my mom's side in particular would always, they'd always be there. And I always remember, you know, they'd, my grandfather like undoing his, undoing his pants and making more room, you know, and then they yeah. would always have coffee, you know, after, after dinner, they'd have coffee and, uh, you know, we'd all fall asleep watching football or something. And, and that is great. And I like how you said a lot of, a lot of people say, oh, we never, never discuss money with family and, and all that stuff. But you know, who else are you going to discuss it with? Yeah. Um, good point. It, it, you know, it, it, it does matter. And if you have, you know, some knowledge about finance, then you, you should be sharing that knowledge. And I try to share with, with, uh, with our, with our family and, um, and, uh, you know, sometimes they, they listen, sometimes, oftentimes they don't, but you know, you've, you've done your job at least. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Good point. If you can't discuss it with family, just like politics, religion, sex, and money, those kind of taboo, uh, topics, you know, to, to talk about with strangers, can't discuss it with family who can you discuss it with so good yeah. good point all right well so another reason i'm grateful for infinite banking and for the fact that somebody introduced this to me 25 years ago i'm sorry not 25 15 years ago um and i got started on it then before hard times came uh, i'm grateful that it was in place and it gave me flexibility and options and confidence and peace of mind during hard times. When do you prepare for hard times? When's the best time to prepare for hard times? Right now. Right now, like <laughs> before hard times come. Yeah. Right. How many people entered these hard times in the last you know four years and they didn't have a, a dollar to lean on living paycheck to paycheck with no with nothing in the bank for a loss of job, a, a, you know, lower income due to many reasons, um, you know, higher cost of everything. Um, Cause they didn't prepare during the good times for the hard times, just like the pilgrims planted seeds and farmed during the good times so that they can make it through the winter when they couldn't grow anything. Same mindset. <clears throat> yeah, that that's right. You know, that's, you know, I've often told people how much, you know, since I started my infinite banking concept journey back in, I hate saying that, but back in, you know, 2018, thankful that I owned whole life since 03, not necessarily the right kind, you know, not the kind of, you could still practice IBC with any whole life, but this is a more efficient product than one that we're using, you know, participating whole life. Mm -hmm. um, but just <clears throat> thankful that I could, that I was able to see it. You know, I could read one book and just, and, and I comprehended it. And I'm very, I'm very thankful for that. And I, and I think it's largely because I was always frustrated with the stock market. 
It's going up, it's going down, I have no control over it. I didn't get stellar returns, quite honestly. Um, you know, much like the typical American who thinks they're, they think they're doing great, but they're, they're not really. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so just, yeah, just thankful that um, how I, how I feel, I have so much more control now, but bottom line, and I feel, I feel wealthier because I took money that I already had, but instead of putting it somewhere where it's locked up, I put it where I could control it. And because of that, um, I'm able to now do things, you know, five years removed from that, from when you sent me that book, I'm able to do things that most other people, most of my peers will not be able to do, not until they're 60, 65. Right. But I'm able to do it now. Yeah. So because you, you planned during the good times, um, you know, even, even if you start during the, the hard times, how much better is it going to be? during the good time well, to continue with this, what you're doing. That's right. So I've got <clears throat> some people I'm, I'm meeting with, um, probably next Monday. Uh, and they're, they're in a, they're in a, they're in a tough spot, but I, you know, there's a way out, you know, if they can change their behavior, but they, they, they do have the ability to, to get out of it. Um, so I would say they're in, they're in some bad times, but at the same time, there's an opportunity here to fix a problem of their own making. Right. Uh, and this is not normally something you and I do, but it's, I, you know, I felt compelled to kind of see if there's a way to see if there's a way to help. Um, yeah. Cause it's, it's worthwhile. I think it's, a, it's just the right thing to do. But if you're listening and you're, you know, $150,000 in debt, credit card debt, uh, you're not an ideal person for us to work with. Just <laughs> put that, put it, that out there. It's going to, create or uh yeah require a radical change of lifestyle i think to eliminate that debt yeah and i and i told these folks great folks uh but bottom line is the infinite banking concept is not magic right. it takes time it takes discipline uh it's an exercise in region reason logic and prophecy right it's it's something you have to adopt as a, as a lifestyle it's not just it's not just this shiny thing that you can just go buy or just go do, right? It's a yeah. mindset. It's a way of life. Um, unless you embrace that, you, you you have to embrace it for it to work. That's simple as that. Yeah, yeah. But but once you've embraced that and you've done that consistently, it, it becomes a habit. And you know, for me, starting it in 2010, and then in 2017 and 2018, I had a couple of rough years. Because I was transitioning yeah. careers, starting businesses, um, just going through some life events that created significant challenges, and you know, financial challenges were a, a major part of that. And thankfully, I had been storing, harvesting, and storing my capital up for the winter months because winter siloing your money, silo putting it in a a wealth warehouse, perhaps a wealth uh, warehouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, and, and it was there as my backstop. So it relieved all the pressure because, you know, what do we like to say? If you have the money to solve a problem, you don't have a problem. You don't have a problem. Right. No, it, it doesn't make it fun that, oh, now I got to reach back and, and, and access this cash to get through this problem. I'd rather be using it for opportunities. But that was, in a way, an opportunity. It was an opportunity to alleviate stress and pressure in my life and, uh, and keep me going instead of just tossing in the towel and going going back and getting a job, right? Which yeah, you know, no, that's right. Option. You were able to you were able to do and handle things that you needed to handle, and you were able to do it without interrupting the growth of that money either. Yeah, or the security of your family, right? Yep. You still were able to do all of those things while securing, still having your legacy secured if something were to ha had had happened to you. Uh, you still had all those things in place, all with one product. Right. And yeah, the, the kids didn't notice. They didn't know that anything was different because their life went on like normal. Right. You know, it was just the, the behind the scenes stress that I was, I was dealing with, um, but it was transparent to them. So I didn't have to put my kids out. Um, you know, they didn't have to, to live through that experience really. Yeah. It was transparent to me. Yeah. So uh having that capital helps in more ways yeah. than one 
Um, yeah, I like, uh, you know, here, here's another one that we thought of, the power of long-term visions. You know, thinking long range, which is what Nelson says. And I'm thankful yeah. that, that, uh, that he spelled that out and was direct and honest about that, that you have to think long range. And, you know, I don't think uh, the pilgrims just thought from month to month or even year to year. They, there's a reason they came to this country, and that's because they were thinking long range. It was not easy. You know, they spent, you know, months on a boat crossing the ocean, cold and wet, and even a couple people died. Um, you know, boats broke, all kinds of tragedies along the way. They could have easily stayed where they were and, and lived out their years comfortably, but they wanted to create a new beginning for their family and for the following generations. So they thought what long a, range. That's right. Wanted to get away from the wanted to get away from the kings and the queens who took the fruits of their labor literally. <laughs> right. Uh, and kept it for themselves, right? So uh, amazing, you know, amazing uh, history of, of, of this country just in general, but uh, unlike any other country that was ever founded in the world. So But yeah, you back to that to that couple that I'm going to meet with, you know, this is going to be a process. I hope they listen to this. This is going to be a long there's going to be some short-term things, you know, goals that we're going to accomplish, some mid-term goals and some long-term goals that are going to be accomplished by implementing the infinite banking concept. So, but this is not a the infinite banking concept is great, but it's not going to solve bad behavior unless right. you really again embrace the process stick to the process don't quit the process yeah it's going you know it took i don't know if it took i don't think it takes hard work to get into debt i think it just just it, it takes hard work to get out of it it's easy to yeah. get into debt it's quite easy sure oh yeah and, and the you know the financial institutions make it very easy for they, you right on purpose nobody should have one hundred fifty thousand dollars of credit card debt yeah and that, I mean, what's the interest rate? I mean, I was just talking to, to my credit card company yesterday, uh, disputing something. And they said, hey, would you like a, 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 inter, like a, a new APR rate for the next six months? And I was like, well, I don't carry any balance, but sure, why not? And they said the new rate was going to be 20 or 10%, you know, down from 29%. <laughs> like, Woo. goodness gracious. Yeah, that's the highest it can be, right? Like 29.9 yeah, or something. exactly. And then it becomes usury because, you know, 30% is usury. 29.9 is not. <laughs> so so silly. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, there it yeah. is. But The problem's the problem. Yeah. If you, don't know what, if you don't know what the problem is, the solution doesn't matter. Yep. So this can be a solution, but like you said, it takes long-range planning, it takes change in, in habits and lifestyle. Um, or some people are very good at this already. They're savers. They're just saving in the wrong place. You know, if you're, yeah, if you're somebody that's... who's saving consistently every month into a, a money market account, a bank account, somebody else's bank, you just need to reevaluate. Is this the best possible place for me to save money? And I can tell you emphatically, no, it's not. There's no, a much not. better place to save money. Correct. No question. Yep. Yep. So do something today that your past, your your future self will thank you for. It's like the pilgrims, like their generations thanked them, you know, long after they were gone because they got to live in America and forge a new yeah. life here. What was that guy's name? Miles Standish? Who's that? Yeah, Plymouth Colony. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, there. I was just thinking of, of legacy and there's there's a place named at Boston University in, in Boston there's a place called Miles Standish Hall and it was named mm. for uh Miles Standish who was on the he was like the kind of like the lead military guy on the on the Mayflower okay and yeah so there you go like still and I can remember my history teacher talking about him like as far as legacy like there he is with his flintlock musket and whatever so you remember uh, Miles Standish but you can't remember Squanto, or who who the interpreter was? Maybe what, right. I did you should Google that. It is. Are you right? It is. Is it Squanto? Squanto. Who was Squanto? Yeah. Okay. I'm telling you. 
Maybe you're Native right. Native American were... contact of the pilgrims. Squanto. Okay, so I was look right. at you. That history major is, <laughs> is paying off, man. <laughs> well, everyone that knows. I, gotta, I, I, have a, I have a good memory. Yeah, it's you just, do. Uh, you actually do. You, you pretty much remember. You, you don't have, like, a photographic memory, do you? No. Uh, I, well, I don't know. I've re- I'm pretty good at trivia, so I don't know if that... I can just recall stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's because I have high, low-density lipoprotein, high cholesterol, um, which your brain needs to function. So, I don't know. Yeah. Everybody who thinks high <laughs> cholesterol is a bad thing, maybe it's time to rethink your thinking. Like, Tammy's got the... Like, as far as what you they want your cholesterol to be, fantastic. But she can't remember anything. <laughs> yeah, kids must have the lowest <laughs> cholesterol of all, which makes sense because they can't even remember to turn a light off after being told 500 times, turn the light off. Oh, my goodness. When you leave the room. It's the worst. Or turn the fireplace off. You know, the gas <sighs> fireplace off when you leave the basement. Um, yeah. You know what? I'm thankful for my kids, though. Let's keep oh, it yeah, in the thankful yeah. spirit of Thanksgiving. You know, it, yep. it wouldn't be the same without the kids around. Especially for holidays, like Thanksgiving. that It's so fun because at Thanksgiving, that's the official start of Christmas season in my house. And yep. that's when you can start listening to Christmas music and, and decorate and all that. And it's only fun because of the kids. Because they enjoy it so much. Now they do. I remember just having very fond memories. But when you think about um, legacy and you know, kind of the legacy that you and I have, have begun for our, for our families. And looking... 20, 30 years down the road, you know, when you're around the table and you look at all the people, like I think of my grandmother, right? Uh, and how many people have been created based on her existence. Right. Right. Like my mom, my aunt, her four grandchildren, her, I don't know how many great grandchildren now, whatever that is, uh, two, four, six, eight, nine, whatever, nine great, whatever it is. And just phenomenal to think about, to think about that. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, our legacy, hopefully, hopefully going to be similar. Lots, of, I want lots of great, you know, grandkids, great grandkids, if we're still alive. And, but to think about those people, those future people have, are going to be affected by decisions that you and I have made today and, and yesterday and in the, in the future. Yeah, no doubt. By, by the good decisions and the bad decisions. But, I, you right. Know, <laughs> mostly can't escape, good. They, mostly good. They can't escape the decisions we make today. Because they do have an impact on their future too. So keep that in mind. Make a good decision today that your future grandkids and great grandkids will thank you for. Um, and I have no doubt that my the generations following me are going to be thankful of what I started for them and perpetuated for them. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, not just the not just the um, the access to capital that the. Uh... You know that your son Jack has already taken advantage of by you know purchasing and, and selling car, a, you know two yeah. cars now, um, you know family banking at its finest, uh, and and I've told Anthony and Carmela like I will finance these things, or if you want to drive that vehicle, sure you can drive the Tesla to high school, but you're going to pay for it, you're going to lease the vehicle, or buy the vehicle from your mom and me, yeah, and you're going to pay the insurance. Like, yeah, you can drive. Anthony was looking at Porsches the other day on Facebook Marketplace. And he's like, oh, look at this one, Dad. It's only like $25,000. 2013. It looked, <laughs> That's it nothing looked nice. for you, Dad. Yeah. And he, yeah. I, was like, well, I was like, well, I'll be honest with you, buddy. I don't care what vehicle you drive. It's not going to be that probably. But as long as you can pay for it. Yeah. I'm not going to buy you a car. Nobody bought me a car. Yeah. You know, and, anyway. and there's so many different ways to go about it, but... You know, when you're able to bless your kids, you want to, but at the same time, you want to teach them responsibility and, and discipline and, and they'll take care of something better that they pay for. Correct. I think there's yeah. something in the human psyche that also, when I when I buy something that I've saved for um, and I get it, there's a, there's a, there's a uh, feeling of accomplishment. Yeah. And there's some intangibles that go with that, that, you know what, I worked hard, I studied hard, I got all, whatever it is. And this was the reward. Uh, and I can't wait for the, for the next one. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, so I think you have to, you, we have to make these, these kids, this generation self-reliant because they're going to be the ones taking care of us someday and making policy decisions for us. We need them to be 
Uh, I'm reading a book by Ben Sass, The Vanishing American Adult. Hmm. Uh, it's real. It's really good. Um, I can't remember. Somebody, maybe one of you who's listening, recommended it to me a couple of years ago, and I finally it came up in my queue, and I, I started listening to it yesterday. It's it's really good. Well, give me a book review on it when you're done. Yeah, no, I I will. It's um, but it's good. And if you're a, if you're a parent right now of you know teenagers and below, maybe even young ad- young adult children, um, give it a give it a listen, give it a read. I think I think it's uh, it's worth your while for sure. So anyway. All right, thanks. That that's uh, there you go, everybody. While you're traveling, you're probably listening to this podcast while you're traveling for for Thanksgiving. Um, but there's another audio book download you can uh, you can listen to while you're traveling. So, all right. Well, hey, we'll wrap it up. Everybody have a great week. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, enjoy the time off, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Uh, until then, control your capital. Or somebody else will. Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. If you'd like to have a conversation with us to see how you can become your own banker, or if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to tackle on a future episode, please send us an email to David and Paul at the IBCGuys.com. And subscribe and leave us a review if you're on Apple. Follow and leave us a five-star review if you're on Spotify. And please share this with your friends. We'll see you next week. <laughs>